Hi, I'm Amy Nolte. Welcome to Amy Nolte Music. The requests keep coming in for me to talk more about rhythm changes. So I'm always glad to do that. And that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to talk about different ways to improvise over rhythm changes. So I'm going to do a few videos for you. Today's video is about how to be bluesy over rhythm changes. You can use the blues almost all the time when you're improvising. And it's cool because that's one of the first ways that we learn to improvise, right? We learn that blues scale. Those notes are the best. You can use them a lot. So I'm not only going to use the notes in the blues scale as we move through, but I'm going to try to mostly use those notes. The thing that I'm going to mostly try to do right now is to make my solo sound extra bluesy. All I'm going to do is just play a bass line with my left hand and I think I'll sing and play at the same time so instrumentalists can uh, see my fingers, vocalists can hear my notes, I think it'll be good. Okay. Here we go, that's a little intro. Now right now, what I'm thinking about is what's a really nice bluesy kind of line that I could use over the blues. And the thing that came to my head was this. That. You could totally use that if you were playing the blues. You can also use it on a rhythm changes. Here's our intro again. I'm thinking about that line. Just change the rhythm of it. I use the same idea, change the rhythm of it. Very simple, very bluesy. thinking in the key of B flat, trying to think about how do I sound bluesy in the key of B flat. So even though we're moving from B flat 6 to G minor to C minor to F7, I'm really not thinking about those chords. The only thing I'm thinking about is uh, like what would BB King do? That's it. <laughs> that should be a bracelet. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, what would BB King do? So when you do get to the E flat chord, uh, around to here. I did make sure to hit a G. But those notes are also in the B flat blues scale, even though they're also in the E flat blues scale. So they work nicely over both. So really the only thing you need to think about on this on these A sections of rhythm changes if you're trying to go for this bluesy sound and I mean it's three quarters of the tune, right? You've got the first A section, the second A section, forgetting about that B for now, and then the last A section. You can make all of those ultra bluesy, and all you really have to think about is <laughs> what would BB King do? <laughs> ah, all right, so let me take, um, let me just take another two, two sections of that, so 16 bars, and I'll, so before I start, I'm going to try to come up with another blues line. Uh, okay, so one of the cool blues notes is this one, the sharp four. <laughs> All right, so that's what I'm going to start with. I have to think about a good place to put it. I'm just going to use my ears. I, th I thought that line was so hip sounding that I didn't want to do anything to take away from it. So I just left it hanging. Let's try it again. Doesn't it? It never hurts 
to listen to blues, listen to what those guys are doing, all those cool guitar cats, all their slidey sounding, really soulful kind of things. You can be, you can be so adept at playing, um, you know, you could be like the craziest hard bop player in the world. And if you're busting out with all your John Coltrane kind of licks on your saxophone, and out of nowhere you just everybody's gonna be like, because you know your stuff. Blues is like number one. You gotta know how to play the blues. So what do you do when you get to the B section if you're playing bluesy? Let's give it a shot. sound bluesy? I think it did. What did I do? I think I played an F note. That's kind of bluesy, right? It's almost blues scale. Um, there was those notes. I'll tell you the truth, you know, I'm not even going to think about a scale over this middle part. I'm just not. Because all I'm trying to do is sound bluesy. And we're going to move through different tonal centers here. We're going to go D7, then we're going to go to G7, then we're going to go to C7, then we're going to go to F7. But the cool thing is that all of those, their only purpose is to move us back to B flat. That's the only reason they exist. It's just like a slight departure from B flat for a little bit, and we're going to go off on a tangent for eight bars to mix it up, do something different, and then we're just going to go back to B flat. So when we get back to B flat, we're still just bluesy. So why not still be bluesy over the B section as well? Let's, let's try some more things. Let's land on the flat seven every time. See that? So we're on the D7 chord. We're going to start on the C note. Then we go to a strong F over the G7 chord. It sounds really bluesy, right? It's the flat seven. use your YouTube, go look at recordings of guys who play the blues really well. Now, you can also listen to Dexter Gordon, Oscar Peterson, Chick Corea. I mean, I could go on and on for days. If you know how to play the blues, you're going to sound a hit. And you can use the blues right over these rhythm changes, and it's going to sound amazing. All right, thanks so much for watching today. Like I said, really soon we're going to have another video where I talk about how to play more bebop style over rhythm changes. But for now, Get out there and go work on the blues. All right, see you guys later. Thanks for watching Amy Nolte Music.